Hello and welcome to the Cognigi AI release webinar for the fourth quarter of 2021. In this video, you will get an overview and a live demo of the latest and greatest additions to your favorite conversational AI platform. Let's take a quick look at the highlights. We will start with our advanced analytics suite. After launch this summer, we further enhanced Cognigi insights and added features like an expert mode, new powerful filters, and many more. We will also explore the latest additions related to our NLU capabilities and the Intent Trainer. And among other highlights, we'll explain the fully integrated extensions marketplace, which allows adding new capabilities to virtual agents with just a few clicks. There's much more to see in this webinar. Please also check out the release notes under docs.cognity.com for the complete changelog. If you have any questions or if you're up for a conversation with your fellow Cognigi AI users, please join our community under cognigy.com slash community. Should you not yet be a Cognigi AI user, but you still like what you see in this webinar, you can sign up for a free trial at any time. And with that, let's start the show. Hi, my name is Matt from Cognigy, and in this video, I'm going to be taking you through the latest changes for fall 2021 to Cognigy AI. All of the changes I will talk through are available in our release notes on our documentation page. You can find it at docs.cognigy.com. Head to Virtual Agents, Release Notes, and you'll find the full list. While I'm on the documentation, I just want to mention that a big part of our release uh, frequency this year has been regarding overhauling the documentation website. You'll find a refreshed user interface with easy navigation through all of our features within the AI tool, as well as being able to quickly and easily navigate between the other features available that come alongside Cognigy AI. Highly recommend you check out the new documentation. And now we're gonna jump into the product itself. And we're gonna start by looking at Cognigy Insights. Now we released this uh, new feature uh, as part of the Cognigy offering in mid 2021 and since then we've added a few great new features that will help users get the most out of their data insights. I'm going to navigate through to the transcript explorer to show you how we've improved this feature. One of the great improvements has been adding a few more filter options into the transcript explorer to reduce the amount of transcripts that you see on the screen at one time and narrow down on exactly what you want to find. So for example, I can reduce the number of transcripts by entering a message count for the minimum number of messages sent in a, a single conversation. Likewise, I have the same for the maximum message count. And uh, I can also have an additional filter here for any uh, types of ratings. So if, an, if a conversation was rated in a negative uh, orientation by a user, I can find a list of those particular transcripts and narrow down on exactly why uh, that conversation went in the way it did. Additionally, you'll notice that we can now copy the text messages from the transcripts. Um, previously, this would take you directly through to the uh, step, uh, sorry, to the message explorer, but now you can indeed copy and paste from the transcript records. Additionally, and coming very soon will be an expert mode toggle where you can view just as you can in the interaction panel with an AI, the, uh, it, the results for the intent trainer and the NLU uh, slots. And that's as you uh, have an input message below that, the any intents or any slots found in that particular message will be shown in the expert mode window. Additionally, inside the Step Explorer, we've added a couple of features to be able to quickly navigate uh, more easily within the uh, within the Step Explorer window. We are familiar with the directional uh, and the starting step filters that we have available, and we've added the ability to set the starting step by right-clicking on a step within the flow editor and uh, selecting either option here. And this will automatically rearrange the Step Explorer so that you have this particular step as the starting point for your overall diagram. So a couple of great new features there for Cognigy Insights. We're going to head back through to the Cognigy application and start off in the profile where a few new features have been added. We have now a time zone option where a user can select their preferred time zone 
And this will also apply the change to what, how the data they view in the Insights application so that you can make sure you're viewing the correct data for the time zone that you're operating in. Additionally, we've added an option for toggling off the node count warnings uh, that will prevent when you have more than uh, 100 nodes in your flows, it will prevent those warnings from appearing. Moving through to the Intent Trainer, we've added uh, what's quite obvious at the top of the screen, many more fi uh, filter options for you to be able to narrow down the example sentences or the inputs that you see within the trainer. You can start by selecting a filter preset, which selects a combination of these more granular filters. So for example, if I wanted to find all sentences that had an intent found, I can quickly navigate to it through the filter preset. Or I can be more uh, granular in the case that I can select one of these individual filters. For example, if I only wanted to see uh, intents that had scored fairly between 0.3 and 0.7, I can quickly see those uh, those sentences and add them to my uh, yeah add them to my NLU model. Additionally, uh, one of the most sought after features has been endless scrolling, so uh, you can now scroll all the way to the bottom of all of your records with uh, the removal of pagination on this page. Additionally, as you do filter through your mod your uh, sentences. You can quickly apply these changes in a single click. Uh, now you can either dismiss the changes that you've made or you can simply apply them just by clicking the apply button. So we're just streamlining that user experience within the, uh, within the intent trainer feature. We've also added some additional support for other uh, user interface languages. So if you are using one of the other languages that you can change to within your profile, uh, you will find that there's an additional uh, capacity and increase of coverage of those languages within this feature. Moving through now to the NLU editor, and we've made a small but very helpful user experience change to the uh, example sentence editor where users can simply press enter to navigate through example sentences. Just makes it uh, much faster to navigate through and enter your example sentences while you're editing inside the UI. Additionally, on the topic of NLU, we've added a brand new NLU connector for Amazon Lex. So you now have a easy direct integration with the Amazon Lex NLU provider. A big feature that we have been working on throughout the year is our new extension marketplace and now very exciting that you can now see all of the extensions available that uh, Cognigy offer as a out-of-the-box integration with many third-party applications available directly from the user interface. These can simply be installed by, by clicking on them and uh, selecting install and just as always you can upload your own custom extensions uh, by clicking the upload button or dragging them into the user interface here. If you are an Extension developer, you will also appreciate that we have added full support for localization within our extensions. So now you can develop extensions that cover all of the localizations that you're using within your flows. And that means providing language specific versions of the extensions for your business users. Moving now through to our endpoints. And specifically, uh, I will start with our web chat endpoint. We've made a few changes in the user interface of the web chat editor that make it a bit easy for users to deploy the web chat widget. For starters, you will notice a new, very obvious embedding HTML uh, code snippet that is readily available for anyone to take the deployment code required to add this uh, web chat widget to a website and uh, install that straight away. So let's try that now. We can take this code, let's go over to this uh, empty HTML web page and we can drop in this uh, code we've taken out of the editor. And then we can see straight away that the web chat has appeared and uh, is already functional. So it gives us a really nice quick way to deploy the web chat widget into our HTML pages. Additionally, you'll notice at the very bottom of the web chat endpoint editor, 
is an additional custom JSON field. Now, the reason we've added this is because you can, of course, configure your web chat configuration, change the colors, change the titles, the start configuration, all through the menus that we offer within the platform itself, within the endpoint editor. But if you're wanting to apply those changes uh, very quickly and maybe scale them across multiple endpoints, you can, of course, provide now a JSON configuration. So if I save that now and I open the web chat, you'll see that I've quickly applied my, my re required color coding. I've added my ratings and I've changed the start uh, performance of the bot. So that JSON field is a very handy thing to do if you are using the web chat widget in multiple endpoints uh, or multiple agents across multiple projects and you want similar configurations uh, carried through. One further small change that we've made is also the availability of a disable autocomplete, which simply disables the ability for uh, autocomplete uh, to function within the web chat widget input text field. So a few changes there to the web chat widget. Now to go through to the flows itself, uh, and one of the, uh, well, some minor changes here, some new additions to flows that we have available. So first you will notice that uh, after we added the option for ratings uh, within our, our, uh, our O data to, to pull rating data uh, through to, uh, to our analytics. We've also added a request rating node. And what this will do is simply prompt the user at this point in the flow when a uh, user is using the web chat widget endpoint to provide a rating. Uh, and you can provide a title and a comment text that will prompt the user to provide some input back uh, that will be recorded in the analytics. Additionally, we have uh, added an option within our questions. So when you are adding a uh, question, maybe you're familiar with our escalation feature, which allows you to escalate the conversation under certain uh, conditions, whether it is an intent being found or whether it is a certain number of wrong answers being met. And what we've added to our uh, available options here is the ability to go directly into a human agent handover. This was something that was only previously possible by having a separate handover node within the flow and directing uh, straight to that uh, using potentially a go-to node, but now we can do it directly from the question node using this option. Moving back uh, into our endpoints, I will also just mention that we've added a new option uh, for integration that is, that is our Avaya CPASS endpoint. So this endpoint will offer you a direct integration uh, with Avaya CPASS, offering some great uh, voice features uh, with, the, with the preset configurations that you need to connect to your specific environment. Additionally, with our voice gateway, we have provided an option for asynchronous, uh, asynchronous messages to be sent to the voice gateway. What this allows is uh, basically is configured within the endpoint settings here uh, by enabling async mode and it allows you to use features that weren't previously possible such as sleep nodes within flows. In the past our uh, voice gateway integration node has worked by waiting for the entire flow to execute and then sending a concatenated message of all the say nodes and potentially waiting for sleep nodes to be finished before sending that full message. Now with async mode, you can send every node individually and you don't have to wait until the full float is, has executed before you send that message. So that's a nice uh, way of uh, yeah, basically using some of the native features that you're familiar with in chat application um, for building virtual agents within the voice gateway scenario. One further endpoint that you will find in the user interface uh, is our non-conversational endpoint. It's very similar to our REST endpoint uh, and it will be available very shortly from version 4.15. And what this will allow you to do is uh, basically use a Cognigy as a process automation tool where there is no need to translate uh, or to use an NLU process in the input message. So it will essentially be an arrest endpoint, but it will have the NLU capabilities disabled and it will be primarily for receiving input from third party applications to trigger conversations that essentially work as flows that can be used to uh, further integrate with other applications uh, or to just be used as a simple process automation tool. We are of course finding more and more applications where that uh, 
that need for a dedicated endpoint is, uh, is, is going to be very helpful and that's why it is uh, being included in the tool. Now we're getting through now to the contact profiles feature. A couple of subtle changes is just to in increase the ability to be able to filter on contact IDs. And uh, additionally, one of my uh, favorite features available within the platform now is the ability to generate playbooks from transcripts. So as I navigate through to a conversation transcript within the contact profiles, I can select the menu from the top right hand corner. And I have two options to either create a playbook uh, on its own or create a playbook with assertions. So what this does takes us directly through to our playbook editor and it will pre-populate the playbook editor with all of the conversation input messages that were created by that user. This is extremely helpful for, uh, in particular for voice gateway conversation debugging, as you can take all of the JSON payloads that were received with the input messages and have those as a executable uh, conversation within your interaction panel that you can repeat over and over again. Uh, and that's very helpful for debugging. So a really nice new feature there. Uh, from within the flow. Um, additionally, I will mention that this is also possible to do it directly from the, uh, the interaction panel. So with your standard uh, text uh, conversations that you have with your bot while you're texting, you can also create playbooks uh, directly from the uh, custom conversations that you have here in the tool. And finally, I would like to mention our increase of coverage of our packaging feature. So packaging uh, started off with the ability to export a single resource from your agents and then import that into another uh, eight virtual agent. What we've done is increase the capabilities of this feature and now offer a full menu uh, selection menu to be able to select individual resources or multiple inter individual resources that exists throughout your conversation, uh, throughout your virtual agent project. This means you can export individual playbooks or individual endpoints or, or even lexicons or flows as they were before and uh, take them away as an exportable file and also uh, this incorporates all of the features uh, such as uh, your locales, uh, it contains all the information that you have localized uh, for all of those particular uh, resources. And then when you uh, import those back into, your, uh, back into your new agent, it also provides you a configuration mapping user interface for uh, deciding which locales you actually do want to import that, uh, those particular contents for. So quite an expansion on our packages feature. And that takes us through to the end of this video. So I hope you enjoy these new features that we've delivered in the latter part of 2021 and wish you all the best with building virtual agents. Thanks very much.